I used to feel so free when I went scuba diving down in the open water. Now, I have to really prep myself mentally before going under the waves, or else the entire water makes me feel like I haven't been buried alive, no matter how open my environment. Ironically, the water comes naturally to me. I'd been on a giant fishing vessel off the coast of Puerto Rico before I was scuba certified. Even though I didn't have this piece of paper, my friend's dad let me tag along with them so long as they could watch over me and instruct me on what to do or how not to kill myself. While I went underwater for the very first time, they were already going out deep enough that there actually wasn't much sea life around us. It was more about getting comfortable in such conditions so that when I did go all alone, you knew which way was up. At that time, going underwater was like going home. I had found my element. Part of me had wished that I could have been one of the deep ones in Lovecraft's fiction, that sprouts gills when they touch the water and they swim off to their eternal home, deep in the bed of the ocean. Well, I was reminded of exactly what I was when this enormous black shape appeared from right underneath me. It was like a writhing shadow, and I thought I had come across a cloud of dirt or something, but the details solidified into the shape of an octopus that was bigger than anything I'd ever seen or imagined in my entire life. I know that doesn't really communicate much. The suckers that whipped close to me had easily been the size of my face, and those were the smaller ones. The tentacles that could make out in the deep, dim light were like the tree trunks of ancient oaks. The monster had things growing on it, also like a tree that had been living in the forest for thousands of years. I swear, I saw all kinds of little corals and growths that had smaller creatures darting among them. I felt like I was in the presence of a sleeping god that had decided to wake up and go for a stroll before slumbering for another few millennia. Its sheer size was terrifying enough, and what truly had punched through my sanity was its eyes. Not only were its unearthly size each the size of me from head to toe, there were three of them, and I was sure I had seen embryonic forms of eyes forming in other places of its body. I was certain because they emitted this phosphorus blue-green light, colder than the light of fireflies. The first few seconds of seeing it was an exercise in watching its eyes roll wildly in all directions. Then, each eye settled on me. That, my friend, is what true terror feels like. I was surrounded by tentacles of every width, and they grasped me tightly. I couldn't kick or wiggle. I had always wondered why you see some animals in nature hold completely still while a predator rips them to shreds. But in that moment, I understood for the very first time. I was so terrified and so panicked, my body had no chance of keeping up with my own thoughts. It was a short circuit of sanity. No matter how my brain screamed, my body would not respond. I was pulled closely to one of the eyes. That near something so big, I no longer saw an eye. I saw light coming from beneath an endless weave of fibers of fluctuating hues of blue and green. I could see each little contraction as something in the abyss of the pupil studied me. It wasn't crushing the air out of me, but it wasn't making it easy for me to breathe either. And we stared at each other for a long, long time. So long that some of the things that made homes on its skin began swimming in my face to satisfy their own curiosity. Then, an electric sensation began crawling over my own skin, and it occurred to me that it might do what an electric eel does to their prey. But the feeling never became unbearable, just uncomfortable. This monstrous thing brought me around to each one of its main eyes, or that's what I understood them to be, and I could feel myself beginning to lose consciousness, both from mental duress and from how shallow I was being forced to breathe. Whether it meant to or not, 
I don't think this creature fully understood just how fragile I was in comparison. And I could feel the whiplash in my neck to this day every time it moved me through the water. It was carrying me. And I thought we were going to go even deeper into the water, where I would ultimately be devoured in the crushing depths of some burrow. But the light actually got brighter, and I could feel the temperature change in the water, getting warmer. Next thing I knew, I was on the shore. I hurt, I couldn't breathe right, but I was alive and mostly unharmed. The thing had thrown me back on land. I know it boggles my mind to this day. My ship found me, they were all in disbelief that I was alive. They barely believed my story, and I get it, you probably won't either. But there's no other explanation. Besides, one of the other divers had seen the monster's shape. They just couldn't tell it had been an octopus. I know it might sound like a crazy old sea tale, but this is why I rarely ever share this story. Most probably won't believe me, but if you do, know that there are things under the water that we will never be able to fully understand.